All right, what's going on guys? It's Eric here. And we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into the trades for today. Um, you know, Monday, November 29th, fresh off of Thanksgiving, off of that four day weekend, and we coming back hitting the markets hard. Okay, today was a good day. Four thousand dollar day. Um one trade ISPC. I'm gonna recap that one for you. I'm gonna go over some of the other alerts that had a good you know momentum to them today so you guys can kind of get a look at things and then uh yeah just kind of go from there so um you know hopefully this continues throughout the week uh especially after that panic sell friday with the you know uh COVID variant um you know panicking killing the markets not for us though a lot of us was green friday in fact ispc was the one i traded friday as well too it made money on so let's go ahead and get into this trade here um so i'm gonna recap this Go through the little thought process so you guys can kind of get an understanding of what I was looking at, what helped me decide to get into it, and pretty much how everything went throughout the whole trade, okay? Um, so this one should be a, a fairly quick recap, but still good for you, you know, to kind of brush up on. <clears throat> so here we go, ISPC. Now, the thing about today, guys, I woke up late, uh, personally. I didn't, I didn't get up until like, it was like almost a little bit before, I think it was like 8.30 I had got up. I don't know, I was tired, maybe it was too much, you know, turkey or whatever over the weekend. I don't know. But I woke up late. And I'm mad because there were some good plays in pre market that I could have did that was even on the watch list. Um that I missed. As a matter of fact, ISPC was on the watch list again. So I mean you guys had ample time to kind of get into this thing. Um it was on the watch list last night, so you should have been looking at this all morning. So hopefully you 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 did and you capitalize on it. But let's kind of go over this trade here. So you know, alerts came through, you know, we got a couple of them on the radar. INMM, NRXP was on the radar. I told you guys to look at that one too, it was right there. Um, so those, you know, especially with something like the COVID affecting the market um, last week, I assume some biomedical or biotech companies was probably gonna move. So that's why I kind of had NRXP on my on my radar from another other week. And, you know, it pretty much came out with some more news as the catalyst. Boom, that's one reason to look at the stock. Um, we'll, we'll come back to this one, but this one did make really, really good moves pre-market. So you had ample time, provided that you're using Webull or a broker that lets you trade early in the pre-market like we do. Easy capitalize uh, right there. Uh, KRYS went berserk. That thing, you know, hopefully you didn't trade it after hours. If you didn't get, if you weren't into that stock before this announcement, or at least got to ride the wave on it up, like that strategy I teach you guys, and then just exit out, then... There was no reason to kind of get into this one. Yeah, it was a good move, but at least with this one, you should have waited for a setup to show. And this was a very expensive stock. So we kind of weren't really focused on that one. But then we had other alerts like, you know, BCLI and other pre-markets coming through. So by the time I honestly got up, I had missed a lot of good pre-market moves. So I'm at this point in the market where everything is already running up. So now I got to sit and wait for things to happen during the opening bell. So you don't want to rush. You know, I, I'm not going to lie. It felt a little bit like FOMO, especially, you know, waking up and seeing all these big movers already in the pre-market because you guys don't like to try to grab my games early and be done before the chaos happens. But I happened to miss it today. But that doesn't mean that there isn't going to be opportunities later on. There's always another chance. I tell you guys that all the time. And FOMO is not real. You know, there's always another opportunity that's going to come, especially with these alerts, okay? Um, you know, we, we cut all that out for you. Just, you know what to look at. Just take your time and, and look at the stocks and find a setup that you want to trade. So anyways, you know, we got more news coming through. So I'm just sitting here the whole time during pre-market that I'm up, just watching the news go through. APDN was, had some good moves too, if you were in it. Um, I don't think I, I didn't trade that one. So, but if you, you know, were looking at it and wanted to short it, that was a good short for you there. If you had shares to find, um, obviously a lot of back holders probably from before. Uh, wanted to exit the position, which is why it tanked. But anyways, a lot of good moves in pre-market. Um, there for a lot of you. ADGI, or ADGI was a good one too. I didn't get in that one, and I'll kind of go over why I didn't get in that one either, um, even though it was making pretty good moves. Um, but there was quite a few guys, PTPI, um, PPSI, both of them were moving good. PT, I mean, it was, it was a lot of plays this Monday coming off of that crazy sell-off on Friday. Um, so you had ample opportunity to, you know, trade. Now, if you didn't do too well, don't frown upon it. Revisit your trade. See what you need to recap. Take a look at it. If you have any questions, you know, shoot it over to me. We could take a look at it, analyze it together. No, I don't charge nothing for that, so don't ask. But <laughs> anyways, yeah, just kind of let me know. I mean, it was a green day. This one, 
I mean, most of the group was about 80% green. So, you know, just kind of take a look at it and revisit. It doesn't hurt to revisit your trades, all right? But anyways, ISPC. So we got the first alert. It was halted, like, right at the high at 17, 1740 after the bell. So you got alerted, like, right here. And this is where it was halted. So this is where it caught my attention. I said $17 is below 20. You know, my sweet spot, guys, is like, you know, usually between 2 to $20 is my, like my sweet spot. Things after that, I kind of get a little cautious. So I'm like, before it breaks 20, because I figured it would, I'm going to go ahead and look into getting this stock. And if it gets close to that, you know, that was pretty much my plotting on my entry and exit. I knew there was some resistance here from previous day, because the whole time it was halted, I pulled it up. First thing I do when I pull it up is I look look left and I see what the previous resistance would have been and previous support levels would have been. So here we had, you know, levels there, levels here, levels here. And this was just after hours. You still got all this to kind of look at. So picture getting an alert right here. You know you're going to have, you know, resistance here, support there, resistance here, support there. Now, if it's halted at this much and it's breaking these new highs, which is breaking all these, so that's going to, you know, ideally propel me to want to kind of get into this trade. Not only that, caught it at a pretty good time because it wasn't too far off coming off the um, high of the moving average convergence divergence. And so I figured, you know, it's a good chance to go ahead and try to get some gains in there, even if it's just a little bit. But if it shows enough support and I see enough orders coming in through level two, I'm going to stay in and ride this bad boy in. So I got filled at 916. I got right in on this dip. My plan was to try to get in on the first dip. And I did. Still at 1916, right after the halt. So it got in, it shot up, spinning top, candlestick. I said, oh, that's good. We got some red on green. That's good. I mean, I got all the indication to try to get in this. We got a history of this thing, you know, moving. I got I got enough catalyst for me to try to go in and take this risk to reward. If it jumped back down to, you know, 17, 16, I'm going to get out. But it never broke the EMA. Uh, so that was a good sign for me. But anyways, so I'm in this thing at 9.16, and I ended up getting out at like 9.20. I'm sorry, not 9.20. <laughs> I got in at 19.16, and I got out at like the 28s, the high 28s. I believe it was uh, 28.65 I had got out. So I got in, rolled this bad boy on up. I know I'm at the high. Why? Because we're at the moving average convergence divergence. So I'm rolling it up, rolling it up. I know it's coming back down. I'm not panicking. As long as it doesn't tank on me, I'm okay. And I got my mental stop loss ready to get out if I need to. But guess what? It never came back to where I assumed it would drop if it would drop based on what? Previous levels of support and resistance. It broke all that stuff and it never came back down. It held support, held support. And now we got it rolling up over again. So I knew here this was time for me to take my profits. At this point, surviving that first wave, I'm going to go ahead and take my profits and I get out at 28 which was almost the high. I mean, I was almost hitting a nail on the head on this one. This one was a, a good breakout. And also, too, I was able to see, uh, I wish I could show you guys level uh, level two, but anyways, I was able to see in level two where the sell orders were coming at, and it was right before that $29 mark. And, I, you know, traders are traders. They're going to, you know, they like holding half dollar marks. So my thought process was to get out between, you know, before, before it hits 29 to get out. And I did just that. So it was perfect timing to get out. So that was an easy trade right there. And then the rest of the day, it just kind of, you know, bounced in between the lines till it eventually, you know, went bearish, broke out again, but not too much and came back bearish. So that was the end of the day for ISPC. So let's kind of play this in real time. So that was that was pretty much the whole process. But let me see if I can do this in real time for you so you kind of get an idea of how it looked. Let's say it's like right here, you know. So we'll press play. I'll try to put it at normal speed. So you guys know I'm usually trading on the minute. I'll actually speed it up just a little You know, I have it sped up a little bit. But, you know, it gets halted right here. Put it up $19. I jump in. This is a little faster than what it is normal speed. But it gives me that whole time, once it's halted, to look at all this stuff, plot my, you know, entries and exit. I'm in the trade, right in the trade. And again, it doesn't go this fast. It's normally a little bit slower. Let me pull this up here. So you got to have patience, you know. And I'm seeing what I like to see here. Pull back, break out, exit. There's no reason to stay in and get greedy. That was it. Plus, by this time, the way it was moving, I'm already up 40-something percent. 
guys, people kill to get 10 to 20 percent. Why be greedy? Why try to go? Why hit home runs? I'm okay with a triple. I'm okay with a double. That's the end of my day. I know you want to grow your account, but you know you don't want to rush. You're going to be doing this day in and day out, day in and day out. That's the purpose of this. The game is about surviving. It's not about you know hitting and quitting. <laughs> you know you want to fall in love with the market, not these stocks. Don't get it twisted, guys. <laughs> Married to the market, not these stocks. All right. So that's pretty much how that trade went. Um, pretty simple, pretty easy. You know, get used to looking at your indicators, but most importantly, get used to looking at level two. Those buy and sell orders will tell you where to trade in between. Okay. So that's pretty much that. Let me exit that part out. Um, let's take a look at, you know, some of the other ones. I mean, RXP was on the list. So you got in this bad boy. You hopefully took your profits when you were supposed to. This one had major moves, especially in pre-market. See, if I would have been up in Adam guys, I probably would have made a lot more money today. But 4,000, I can't complain. So we got up, pulled back, shoots up again, pulled back. I mean, this is an easy stair step pattern, guys. Literally easy. Or if you want to call it three rises, I mean, there's so many different names for them, but I call it just a stair step pattern. One looks like a stair step. That's it. Boom, boom, boom. That's it. New highs, new lows, new highs, new lows. Simple. So NRXP was a good trade for you to do pre-market. And of course, opening bell, boom, it dumps. That's just how that works. And that's why you need to be having brokers like Webull to be trading pre-market. Okay. Uh, let's see what other... Alerts are pretty decent. These are these are after hours ones. BPTH that's happening right now. Market closes in like an hour after market. Let's look at CPIX. Look at this thing after hours. Bonkers. But it easy. Another stair stepping pattern. Are you seeing that, guys? Are you seeing that? Seeing that? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's always one or two of them after hours that's going to run like this. And if you start mastering after hours, I mean, you at least can get some money from there. I mean, it's telling you, hey, this is a new support level. All this area is telling you this is new support because it's the lower end of the moving average, guys, and it's above the volume weighted average price. <sighs> it's just, I mean, I don't know, man. It's too easy. But anyways. That's pretty much it. You know, you could have made a little bit of money there. Um, what other alerts was pretty good? It was quite a bit of them today. Um, oh, man, this this one was a killer. Uh, QGLN. If you were holding this stock... Uh, oh, wait. Was it QGL? QLGN. My bad. Look at this. That's like a death candle right there. How how often was this thing alerted? This is why I tell you. I mean, you don't. This is another reason why you don't want to be greedy, man. Because stuff like this happens with these, you know, with these stocks. So let me pull it up here. I think the earliest one was kind of when we were letting, when we were notified that it was over to two dollar volume weight average price. Boom, boom, boom. ISBC, BT, BPTH halted. KPTI so back over two dollars. Okay, and this was like mid. This was like right here, middle of the day. Yep. Boom. Hey, QLGN is back over $2. It has decent volume. So, you know, if you're riding this thing here, back over $2, got a little bit of pullback. It's still showing strength, showing strength. You got pullback, but it's above the volume rated average price. That's good to know. It's just juggling, juggling, juggling along. It's just grinding out right here at this point, you know, grinding out. And then finally, it starts to break. New high, new high, new high, new high. By the time it hits that $3, guess what? Boom, we're having an offering. And then it just tanks. That's brutal. I mean, it was a little bit of a variance. This was a small enough stock for you to kind of, you know, manage your risk properly. But, man, that's just horrible. That's the worst thing, man. That's like slapping the face by this, by you know, by this stock. So, I don't know. Hopefully, it's a lesson learned for some people. Not to be too greedy, but hey, 
That's why you need to manage your risk. <laughs> you know, I tell you guys all the time. Let's take a look at KTTA. Did that do anything? That did something. It wasn't too much. Yeah, this is where it started to go berserk here. I believe it was halted at one point. Yeah, broke a high, fell back down. Now, let's say you got into this one and it was alerted. Hey, it's broken a new high. Boom, look at it. Do not be chasing. If you know that, if you know you're in a position where you enter the stock and it's and you know that you're chasing, get one two percent and get out. I mean, it just doesn't make sense to try to hold this and be greedy. You would have got halted right here anyways, and then you know, boom, get out. Because that's what everyone else is doing. That's why you want to wait to see the moving average turnover at least once, so you can see what that new level of support is. Okay. And look, that's just where it stayed at. At least you would have limited your losses. If you don't learn anything from me, learn how to limit your losses. And you can do that by making sure you're looking at the moving average convergence divergence and entering in a lower end if you're a bull or entering in a higher end if you're a bear. Whatever is easier for you guys, okay? But that's pretty much it. Um, I think the admins are going to close alerts here in a second. Um, yeah, what's money being made all around today? So hopefully you guys, you know, banked on everything that was there. Um, PPSI, that one was a good one. Easy play after hours. Same thing. Pull back, pull back, higher lows, higher lows, higher lows. I mean, guys, this this will get repetitive real quick until you learn to read this stuff. But once you learn to read it, all that fear and stuff you have about trading in and everything will go away because then at that point you'll learn to manage your risk and get better at this okay so a lot of opportunity there um good ranges could have easily banked but uh yeah i mean that's pretty much it guys i mean that was today's trades kicking off monday hopefully you know like i said you guys pocketed something about to get ready to do this watch list and post it up for you um message me if you have any questions shoot me an email Message me on the, on the chat, whatever. Slide in the Facebook DMs, pause. But yeah, you guys, we got more money coming, okay? So till then, stay green.